So today I'm going to show you three things that you can do to get yourself ready for the migration or the integration from Logic Pro desktop onto Logic Pro iPad. Please understand that all this is speculative. Of course, I do not have an advanced copy of Logic Pro for iPad, but I have seen some evidence based on the screenshots and the videos that some of these things should work. So instead of worrying about doing it after I get Logic in my hands on my iPad, I'm just gonna go ahead and handle my business now, and I'm gonna take you on the journey with me while we get it done. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is get some kits prepared for Drum Machine Designer or DMD. Now they say in the write-up that this is going to be available on iPad, and they also really make an emphasis on the back and forth compatibility from the desktop version to the iPad version. So it stands to reason for me that they would allow the kit format to be exactly the same. So preparing for that, I'm going to make some kits for DMD. Now there's a few ways that you could approach this, but the easiest way for me is just dragging and dropping samples onto the pads inside of DMD. But I don't want it to be random. I want it to be a musical experience when I'm playing. So what I'm going to use is Kit Maker which is a great app that I recommend grabbing for desktop. And this helps convert any of your machine libraries or maybe libraries that you got from Splice or wherever else. You can use Kit Maker to go ahead and convert those kits into the Akai MPC format, the Beat Maker for iPad format, Nano Studio 2 format, which is also iPhone or iPad, EG Pulse, which is another iOS app, the Deluge, which is the hardware device, or numbered files and you can also build ableton drum racks what it is well with the ableton live box checked here but for our purposes we're going to go with the numbered files method and you want to make sure that the layout of the pads is something that you find agreeable if this is the type of layout that you want to go for and then we're just going to drag and drop our kit from machine and you can drag as many of these as you want, but for this example, we're just gonna be doing the one, and then we're just gonna hit make kits, and then it says kits finish, and then we're gonna go ahead and show the kit. All right, so we got our kit right here. Now we've got Logic launched already. We're gonna create an empty project, and I don't really care what instrument it does for the first one, but what I'm gonna do next is turn this into a drum machine designer patch here. And as you can see, we've got our drum machine designer pads here. And let me go ahead and make sure there's room for this. All right, so we got our library here and we're just going to take them one through 16 and drag them onto the pads. And as you can see, since we've gone with number kits, all the numbers are going to go to the correct corresponding pads. And then we're going to hit this top header bar here. Hit save. And the name of the kit is dazed, spelled like this. So we'll go ahead and save it. And bam, we've got our kit ready to be pulled up at any time. So for instance, let's go to this kit and then let's go back to it real quick and we are all good. So we've got our kit dazed, ready to go right here. And for one more example, let's go clear all pads. And one thing that I always like to do is make sure that I go back after each time doing this and make sure I select empty kit. Just makes the process a little bit better for when I'm saving it, I make sure I'm not overwriting anything. Everything just works. Anyways, let's select our next one and drag it onto the first pad. After selecting all the files, and as you can see, it populates them all for us already. We're going to hit this top header again, then hit save down here. And we're going to name this kit D-I-G-R, Digger. And so we've got that ready and we can just test it out, make sure it works. All right. So everything seems to be good there. So now that we've got 
that part of the process done we would repeat this until we've got as many kits as we want to get done done but with that said i'm going to move on to the next part of this video now and that is to use the quick sampler and to build kits for it so what i'm going to do in order to do that is i'm going to go on a stereo quick sampler and say instead of using the drum machine designer which you're fine to do if that's how you want to work some people want to draw on more often or want to deal with a single one shot at a time we could take something from the same kit say it's a kit we really liked and go ahead and drag and drop it and you can choose if you want it to be original which is the original tuning of the sample loudness looping and length or they can optimize the tuning and loudness which way you want to go with this is entirely up to you for this situation i'll go ahead and choose optimized and i don't want it to loop at all so it's good that that is not set up there and then let's go ahead and pull out our little typing keyboard musical typing so i do this in order to play uh, things chromatically you can do this with the drum machine designer kits too if you were to drop down into one of the sounds so if we were to, to select one of these sounds from the drum machine designer drop down we would be able to Play it chromatically also as you can see so you might be wondering why go through the hassle of the quick sampler you don't have to it's just something i like to do because i don't always want to load an entire kit sometimes i know the specific hi-hat i want or the specific snare or kick that i want to go for so instead of building out a whole kit every time for a single sound maybe i'll you know be able to be more selective with each individual sound it's just a workflow preference but what you would do with this is you would then go save as that's what we would do for instance there but what i would really do is i would make it an effort to go back into the machine pack and i'll show you what i mean by that so for instance the machine pack for burrow chops is this specific format where it's clap hi-hat kick snare i would rebuild all those out and then i would just work on every single one shot in here it would be tedious but this is what i would do to go about building out the perfect experience with the quick sampler if that's what i wanted to go for and this is a process i usually exclusively have for my favorite sounds so i might really like a certain kit certain pack off splice whatever this is a process that i would reserve for that because it's so tedious but it's a nice payoff because you can comfortably draw things in, pitch your hi-hats, get a different kind of vibe going when you're playing, you know, everything. So again, totally up to you, but that is how I would do it. And another thing that I really enjoy about when you build things with the quick sampler is you now get access to everything on this menu that's really smooth so you don't have to go diving for samples on the finder and the files app or with sample crate if you're using uh, logic for ipad you would just have everything natively in the browser really smooth and that is why i go through the tedious labor of putting all these together okay so we've done our drum machine designer kits we've done our quick sampler one shots and finally for the most dedicated people who really want their desktop vst or a specific desktop vst or in this case audio unit patch to be able to go everywhere with you on your ipad you can go ahead and do the auto sampler method now i want to put a little disclaimer here i don't know if the entire sampler is going to be on logic pro for ipad and how esx24 files will work within logic natively However, there is an app called Audio Layer that can open ESX24 files. So in any case, if you pull off the Herculean effort of like porting a library or a few patches of your own to the ESX24 format with Auto Sampler to use on your other projects on the go, even if Logic Pro does not support the sampler aspect of Logic that's on desktop, you'll still be good with Audio Layer to import those ESX24 files. So with all that said, let's go ahead and pick an instrument. 
Now the piano that I'm picking is gonna remain completely anonymous, but the concept is just to be able to do the auto sampling. So we'll go ahead and work through that now. We're gonna go on a utility auto sampler stereo. And I recommend having a MIDI controller when you're doing this, just to kinda understand uh, the different velocity patches in it, but you don't necessarily need to have one because the auto sampler has a great thing with the velocity layers where you can kind of hear what's going on at every level. So what I like to do is start to see where I hear differences. So I hear a difference there. So let's go ahead and let's add six velocity layers just because I, I, I'm hearing quite a few differences in this. That's going to be our 127. A little bit more hit there. A little more muted. Let's go ahead and see how long it sustains. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It looks like it's looping somewhere in here. I don't know. But in any case, I'll go ahead and do 12 seconds. You could do it shorter or longer. You can also have it looping if you want. These are more sophisticated options. I suggest you research them a little bit more before deciding what you're going to do. And if you were to be sampling, say, a drum kit, you would go ahead and hit the one shot button. But we are not. So we are not going to hit the one shot. So there's a few options here that um, can kind of help you a little bit if you just want to set it in for getting you don't really want to take your time the log one through three or the exp one through three for linear um, you could check out on apple's website what each of those do but yeah i like to go in and manually kind of listen to each key to see what it's doing and now is the time to decide if you're gonna do round robin or how many semis. So round robin, I believe is basically when the sample changes on every other hit. That sounds the same to me, so I'm not gonna make this a round robin because the round robin will basically sample everything, however many times you say at every note. So it would go with this, um, C1 at 21, if you said two times, it would go, it would do it twice because there would be a different sample that it switches to, if that makes sense, for every time you hit it to kind of give it a certain feel of realism. Certain libraries have that, certain libraries don't. This one does not appear to. So we will now decide on the semis, being that this is a piano, we want it to play you know, pretty decently, but this is gonna take up a lot of space. So we've got to start deciding what our sacrifice is gonna be. Is our sacrifice gonna be the length of the sustain? Is it gonna be how many velocity layers that we've got going on here? Can we sacrifice a couple? Or do we really wanna be having all those velocity layers? Or do we want to sacrifice how many semitones that we're going to sample and the range of those semitones? So you can go all the way down here if you want and expand the range or go to the topmost key, expand the range there. So as you can see, this can get pretty serious, pretty heavy. 
and it's all about what you want to do. So if it's a piano or an instrument that you feel like I got to have this on iPad and start it on the go and I'll pull up the real VST when I get back to the house or whatever, you know, maybe you just need an idea of it. You don't need it to be sampled so richly. You know what I mean? But in any case, we're going to go ahead with this and see how it does. And this is probably going to like an hour. But what it'll tell you is how long it should take after it gets a few samples done. Yeah, so 44 minutes remaining is how long this is going to take, which is crazy. Okay, now that our instrument is done here, Let's create another software instrument track and go ahead to the sampler. We can go to our piano here. So we can check out how it sounds. I think it sounds pretty good actually. Let's go ahead and slap some scaler on it real quick. So yeah, as you can see, if you auto sample some of your favorite VST patches, it can end up being quite powerful. So if there's a patch that you absolutely must have from desktop, that's what I recommend doing. And again, in case they don't bring this full sampler to Logic for iPad, which hopefully they will, you can always use audio layer. You just uh, import the ESX 24 into audio layer and it'll work there also. And it works off of disk streaming. It's very efficient. It can usually handle whatever you throw at it. And again, if you do it in audio layer, you're able to take that into any other DAW or audio unit host, such as Beatmaker 3, Drambo, etc., etc., and you can use those kits there. And they're able to sync to the cloud as well when you use Audio Layer. So if you install it on one device with iCloud, it will then carry over to all of your other devices as well, which makes it a little bit easier to have it across your different devices. But yeah, those are the three things that I think Logic Pro for Mac users who are going to be using Logic Pro for iPad should look into doing in order to get themselves better situated. And I think that doing one, two, or all of these three things will make your project migration process a lot easier. So you'll be able to start a project on iPad, send it to the Mac or vice versa, because it's all the native logic format you will be able to comfortably know that you can go back and forth without it you know, being an issue or missing a plugin and all that kind of stuff. But hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. And if you aren't subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on the latest news, tips, tricks, sales, beats, reviews, updates, and more. And with all that said, I'm about to get out of here. It's iPad beat making. Peace.